So, a lot of people want to know how to make cutscenes in Roblox. Very, very simple. So, firstly, insert a part. This is where the camera is going to uh, be at the start to begin with. So, what you need to do is anchor the part, set can collide to false, and uh, whether you make it transparent or not, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it half transparent for now so we can see it. But the, the most important thing is if you go to the surface uh, tab in the properties window, and uh, you click on front surface so if you think of the camera we're going to position the camera to be in this position so it's going to be looking uh, at where the front surface is so if you do that and you just position the front surface to be rotated and positioned in the way you want it to be so the front surface will be wherever the camera is going to face okay so when you've got your first one let's just name it um you know test one Let's insert another part, and what you can do actually is set the front surface to um, a motor, so you can actually see it's now pointing out from the front surface. You can see that it's going to be in this direction. So let's just duplicate this and put it somewhere else, um, over here for example. So now we've got our two parts, I'm just going to name this one part 2. Let's go ahead and script them. Okay, so to make a tween, it's very simple. We have to do it in a local script because the camera is controlled locally on the client for each player. So in a local script, I've put it in the starter GUI. We firstly have to make a variable for the tween service. Then I'm making a variable for the camera because that's what we're going to be animating. And I'm also creating a variable for the length of the cutscene. So if you want it to last 12 seconds, keep it at 12, but change it to the amount of seconds you want. Then I've set up the tween info. Now this is required to tell the script what our tween should look like. So we have to give it the um, time, which is going to be in seconds. I've just passed the variable, then a comma to separate from everything else. Then the style, so what the animation will look like. You can choose from a predefined list. I've chosen um, sign, although you could choose any of these. Have a play with them. Uh, easing direction, you have to choose in or out or in out. Uh, not shake it all about. Uh, so choose one of these and that just determines uh, the way that the animation plays. So does it go from, you know, uh, from, does it go from backwards, um, you know, and plays it the other way around. So I've kept it at, at out and then we've got the uh, repeat count. So whether it will repeat itself, I don't want that. So I've set it to zero. Uh, then this false is going to be whether it reverses. Obviously it's not going to repeat, so it can't reverse. So that's false. And also zero is the delay time. So if you wanted it to delay once it's got there before it goes back, if you did repeat it, you'd put an, uh, an amount of seconds in there. But what I've done is I've created a function and it's called tween and it will take two arguments, part one and part two. So part one is an object and so is part two. And part one is going to be the part where the camera starts off at. So we firstly have to set the camera's camera type to be scriptable. So it's an enum. And when you set it to scriptable, that's allowing you to edit the camera with a script. If you didn't do this, it wouldn't work properly because the camera wouldn't go from part one. It would go from your character. So once we've set it to scriptable, we're then able to change the C-frame, so the position and rotation of the camera, to be looking at part one. Um, so the, the way that part one is facing. So if you imagine, because it's, it's going to be looking from the front surface going outwards, it would be looking here. Okay, so then we create the tween. We give it the camera, because that's the object which we're going to change the properties of. In this case, we'll be changing its C-frame property. We're going to give it some tween info. So this is the info we've created to tell the script how the tween is going to animate and what it will look like. And then this table here, the third argument, is the list of properties which we're going to change. So we're only going to change the camera's C-frame. We're telling the script that we want to move the camera to part two's C-frame. So if part two was over there, well, the script would, would just animate it like this, and it would just find the fastest route to get to this part, to get to the second part C-frame, and it will smoothly animate it because we've given the tween info, which tells us how long it should last for, the style of the animation, etc. So we then play the tween, and then we have to wait um, 12 seconds because this doesn't yield so as soon as we press play and we start the tween it will just move on to the next line of code which would be to reset the camera to be looking at your character again but we don't want to do that straight away we need to wait the length of the cutscene so have the wait with the same amount of time after the tween dot tween colon play then it will wait the 12 seconds before it resets the camera when it sets the camera type back to custom
So outside of the function, I'm just waiting two seconds to allow the player to spawn in, and then I'm calling the function, and I'm passing through the, the two parts. So game.workspace.test1 is where the camera will start off, and game.workspace.test2 is where it's going to end up. So let me go and show you this now. And we wait the two seconds so that we can spawn in. Um, you can see the camera is now smoothly transitioning to the second part. So really, really cool. And of course, you can edit and change it. So it, it could be starting over here. Uh, you know, we could have a, just a part over here just to show you the camera moving. And if we just um, go in and change the length maybe to um, 10 like this and we start it up again, uh, you'll see that it just really smoothly animates once again um, from the first part to the second part, just like that. And you've got a really lovely cut scene. So obviously, you don't have to uh, you don't you don't have to keep these these parts visible. You can just make them transparent as long as they're anchored, so they stay in position and can collide is false, so you can't collide with them. But it's just really important to know that the camera will be looking at whatever the front surface of each part is going to be looking at. And if you wanted to do this, you know, multiple times, just keep calling this tween function. So, for example, if you wanted to do it again, from going from test 2 to then another a part called test 3, just put another part in there, call it test 3, and uh, we'll just change the name, test 3, and you've got that second function call. So once the first tween is done, and the camera is now at test 2, you can put it to test 3. So let's go and give that a try, and we'll set the cutscene to 3 seconds for now. Here we go, it goes to part one, and then it goes to part two, just like that. Pretty awesome, huh? Uh, and you might want different times for, you know, different tweens. Um, so you could move the cutscene time and the whole tween info stuff into the tween function like this. So it's a different cutscene time, and you could have an argument called, let's call it cutscene time. You can't use the word time because that's used in scripting for something else. Um, but you could then just get rid of this variable and change the cutscene time in the tween info to the cutscene time argument that is now in the tween. And then if you passed the timer, you would see one second for the first, ten second for the second, and it would go at different speeds. So the first tween should be really fast, whereas the second one shouldn't be. So yeah, really fast and then really, really sh uh, long. So that's how you do tweening in Roblox with the camera. Hope you found this useful. Do check out my video on C-frames. It should make it easier to understand. And uh, yeah, please like the video, subscribe if you enjoyed it, share it with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.